I warned you not to listen to that, Kids My Goat. Now look at you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dune Steeds That Gets My Goat on the Go. Yay! Hey, can I make that really long like I was doing with the, uh... uh <laughs> can they even hear you talking with over the sound of the engine? I don't know. It's probably uh, difficult. I do have a mic right under my throat, but uh, that doesn't mean they can hear me over the engine because we are, again, climbing a steep hill. What is the deal with this part, man? It's all uphill somehow. We've been driving uphill for the last two hours. But anyways... You'd think we would be descending the mountains going into the desert. Yeah, at some point, but... Anyways, yeah, I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And we are still on the go. On the go, no, it was on the move, was Mannequin's sequel, wasn't it? Mannequin, was it two? It was number two, not T-O-O. Yeah, Mannequin 2, On, on the, the move. move. This is Dune Steep. That gets my goat on the move. Um, speaking of Mannequin 2, another film that came out right about the time as Mannequin. I just saw it for the first time two days ago. Maybe three days ago. I can't remember exactly when it was. It was really recently. I'd never seen this film before, despite knowing a great deal about it. I'd never seen any of the films of the series. I had seen some of the TV shows. The film I saw was The Highlander. Here we are, born to be kings. We are princes of the universe. Are you going to sing a song for every movie I mention? Because... And here we are, <laughs> with the princes of the universe. I am going to, yes. <laughs> so maybe I'll stop it. I am immortal. <laughs> I have inside me blood of kings. Yeah. I think I'll stop mentioning films then. That's the end of the film talk. See you later, folks. No, uh, yeah, I've never seen this film before. Uh, it came out in 1986, right? It did. Which was a time that I should have means I should have seen this film. It was just right for me at the time. Somehow, there's a few other movies like that too that I didn't see, even though I should have. Maybe because they were rated R, which uh, you know, since I was underage at the time I wasn't able to see. I'd never seen Terminator, the original Terminator, until just a couple of years ago when I watched it with you. Of course I'd seen Terminator 2, and no, I did not see Terminator 3, but that's not the point. No, the point is the remake of Terminator. They, just, they there cast be a Amelia remake? Clark as Sarah Connor in the remake, and uh, yeah, she's pretty as the day is long. I'm never going to see a remake of Terminator. <laughs> so Terminator's getting remade? I thought they were doing more Christian Bale. I, they gave up on that. I huh? guess not. I, Warner Brothers had the franchise for, what, one movie? And like, enough. We sunk so much money into it and we only got a third back. Enough. It's just what? such a funny climate we live in where it's just like, time to reboot. Yeah, it's weird, but yeah, so... Terminator. No, sorry, we're not talking about Terminator. Please. Stop it. We're talking about Highlander. I'd never seen the Highlander before. I should have because it was the right, you know, it came out at the right time and it was the right kind of movie for me to have seen it. And maybe had I seen it, this conversation would go completely differently than it's going to go. But you think that if it had been PG-13, you would have seen it? I would say there's probably a pretty good likelihood I don't think I'd heard of the movie, though, until several years, I would say as many as eight years after it came out, wow, I didn't really? really know about Highlander. Well, it was not a hit. No! It was not successful in the slightest. I never heard of it when it was new. It was one of those that gained a cult following on video, much like The Terminator, except for Terminator was a gargantuan hit compared to Highlander. And Terminator was also good. Um, <laughs> I'd never seen this film before, so I watched it. And what in the hell? How? How does anyone know about the Terminator? I mean, damn it. Terminator, go away. How does anyone know about the Highlander now? That movie was awful. Oh, I love Highlander. They cast 
the least likable lead character. Like, this guy is creepy. He, the whole time he's, like, leering and, like, weird looking. And he's got these, like, creepy eyes going. And he they, they seems... They cast a Frenchman as a Scottish... A Frenchman as yeah. a Scottish Highlander. They cast a, a Scottish Highlander as, as a Spaniard. A Spaniard. Uh, at least they cast Americans as Americans. That worked out okay. Oh, but Roxanne Hart so sucks in that movie. <laughs> Oh but gosh. everybody sucked in that movie. The, the Highlander was so like the, the Connor, we should say his name was Connor McLeod, was creepy. Like the entire time, he's looking at people in just like a I don't know. Maybe it's a predatory way. I expected him to just turn into Hannibal Lecter at any time. Like all of a sudden, he was just going to grab that girl who was the police inspector chick and just like bite her face and like eat her cheek off or something because he was so creepy and the way he spoke made no sense at all he had this weird accent you talk funny nash where you from lots of different places yeah and there was that too like every character for no good reason at all was like super like hostile and and okay the opening sequence these, Remind me what the opening. The opening. Are. They have the wrestling match. Oh, okay, in the parking lot of the. And then in the parking lot, he has a fight with another Highlander. Another immortal. Another immortal. Sorry, you're right. I, I keep saying that they're not called Highlanders. It's called. I, I said the same thing to my friend that I watched it with, and he's like, "Highlander's a guy from the Highlands of Scotland." And I was like, "Oh, right, right. Sorry." So he has a fight with another immortal. He succeeds in defeating him. Cuts his head off. Everything blows up. The police arrive before he can get out. And they're ready to arrest him. They act like somehow they know that there's a guy with his head cut off in there. But they haven't gotten there and even seen it yet. There was an explosion and this guy's driving out. Like you would think anybody would be if there was an explosion in a parking garage. They'd be like, holy crap, I need to get the hell out of here. But instead, they're like, oh, get down! And this guy, who's been immortal and, you know, been basically in hiding his entire life because he doesn't die, you would think by the fourth century of doing this, he would have some experience in how to lay low. But instead, he's like totally a douche of a, a man, you know what I mean? He's like, he's the tough guy. The policeman can't cuff me. How dare you? Oh, I'm going to fight back against you putting these cuffs on me. And I'm going to be a jerk so that the police will want to beat me up even more. Because that's what an immortal guy does to hide his identity. I don't know. It's just... There were so many things wrong with how this movie was executed. Queen was cool. It was nice to have Queen in there. And I did like when the bad guy quoted the Def Leppard song. I've got something to say. It's better to burn out than to fade away. The bad guy was... Happy Halloween, ladies. Really weird. The Kurgan by Clancy Brown. Yes. And that was another... You know, okay. So this is my question for you. This is why I wanted to talk the Highlander. How is it that people still know of this film? This film was bad enough that it's one of those that you should watch with a bunch of friends while you're stoned or whatever and then just like make fun of it and joke about it this film should be a joke but it's not instead it's got what four sequels is it there a highlander four or was uh, there a five i think there are five and oh there i think there may even be six yeah it was a straight to video and sequel. there was a tv show in the 90s there were yeah two tv series and there an was animated two? series oh and an animated look at so, what is it? That's what I, I... I have a theory as to why it's... Uh, I have a what theory. It is. That it's what do you think? Why is this movie not a joke? Why is it a huge franchise that... You said the rebooting, the remaking? They, 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 they have plans they were to remake. remake. They haven't done it. And, and part of it may be fear of fan outcry when they remake it. Oh, God. <clears throat> If any movie from the 80s could do with a good remake, 
that one would be it. There's so many that they've remade that were great in the first place, didn't need any help. That movie was awful. <laughs> it could have used, you know, there were so many missteps and so much good stuff could be done with the idea that they just did not do. Um, See, I don't know. I mean, I disagree completely. I haven't seen Highlander in going on 20 years. Okay. But it was such a part of my teenagehood. It was one of those movies that was, it was a cult film. Uh-huh. It was kind of like Firefly. Okay. Where very few people knew about Firefly, but they were passionate about it, and so they would share it with somebody that they were friends with, and then that person would go on and share it with someone else, and that's at least what happened with Highlander That's in the how 90s. I first heard about Highlander was in the 90s. This guy was just like, oh my gosh, I gotta tell you about this movie. And it starts out like this, and there's dudes with the swords, and then there's this massive queen song that just plays, and it's so awesome. And I was just like, oh really? Wow, that sounds like a good movie. And then I saw it the other day, and I was just like, dude. Yes, but this guy is... guy didn't drink. What you're somebody that did not like E.T. when he first saw it, and it's you say it's because you didn't it way too late. see it as a child, or you're part of, you know, I don't know. I a, saw it after I'd seen, like, 15 E.T. ripoffs, and so it's hard to see a movie that's you've only seen the ripoffs of and then try and see this and think, oh, this, oh, damn it. That's the rest stop. That's a rest stop. There's lots. Yeah, but I got to pee now. Well, why didn't you take it? I told you to make sure I didn't miss it. I was busy raving about Highlander. Oh, man. Now I'm going to wet myself. Okay, so my experience was very, very different. I, too, had Highlander described to me before I ever saw it. But I, I was super impressed. There was a while there when Highlander was my favorite movie. And... Uh, I still know it well enough to quote it, even though it's been all these years since I saw it. And the last time I saw it, I'd say it was about 96, when it was its 20th anniversary. 10th. 10th anniversary, thank you. I didn't think it was all that great the last time I saw it, and I was like, oh, dang. Well, that's too bad. I, I can never watch this again. And so I haven't. Very wise. But I remember, A, it having just a fantastic premise and two being made with such style that i was just like wow this every single shot and every single transition and all this stuff it was like art it was like it, what it was was a music video director uh -huh. using all of the tricks he had learned as a music video director in a motion picture but for me that was new that was wow you know visually this is amazing now, granted, it had a, a, a low budget, and it may have had a cheesy script, but uh, except for Roxanne Hart, I just loved everything about Highlander. Yeah, the film, I can definitely see it being a music video director. Was it his first feature film then? I believe so, yeah. I can, I can definitely see that because... He might have made Razorback, which was an Australian killer pig movie oh i think the acting could really have used some good directing done to it you know what i mean and as a music video director i'm sure he didn't have to deal much with actors it was much more visual this and that was one of those things that because i was rolling my eyes so much i probably had a hard time noticing the really good art that you're talking about however my friend kept pointing it out Especially the transitions. The transitions were where the they best I've ever tons seen. Tons of transitions where it would be, yeah, the, you know, they, they, they pan down and then it comes up on, you know, the, the, the Highlands of Scotland or he's swimming in the water and then it comes down and then it's, it's the, the fish, fish tank. tank. They had a lot of that kind of stuff, which was cool. Uh, but yeah, it couldn't fix the script unfortunately the script I don't know sometimes it frustrates me and I remember once being at a symposium where an author was speaking and he was talking about dialogue and he said yeah sometimes I'll write a whole conversation and then I'll just go in and lift out like sentences out of there 
uh, removing things that people said because that's the way people really talk. They'll they'll skip to other things and stuff like that. And I was like, what? You take the, the the lines out that make it make sense. You just pull them out just because you want it to sound like well people really talk. And maybe that's what they did with this script a little. It was never clear what was going on. There were so many times where you were just like, you know, it would really be awesome if someone would just explain things so you know the rules of the freaking world. Well, wasn't there a a prologue where Connery says, <laughs> moving silently through the centuries, leading many secret lives, struggling to reach the time of the gathering when the few who remain would battle to the last. No one has known we are among you until now. Here we are! Okay, I'm sure there was that. <laughs> he's got it memorized, even though he hasn't seen it since 96, and he's got it memorized in the accent, even. Um, well, that's where my Connery came from, was right. was trying to do I Ramirez. Yeah. Ramirez! That's the worst. You His told me is... you were from Spain. You are a liar. You have the manners of a goat, and you smell like a dung heap. Now get out! <laughs> oh, freaking... Why would they make... See, I assumed when I'd heard all about the Highlander, and I knew that Connery was, like, his teacher or whatever, um, I assumed he was also a Scottish person. I would never have imagined that they would make him a Spaniard. But he was actually Egyptian. Yes, that's true. So that explains the Scottish accent, <laughs> I guess. Uh, anyways, um, the reason why I think that this film has become what it is has to be just because the premise, the idea behind the film is so awesome, so epic, and so rad that it was able to overcome all the other things. All the, the missteps that were taken, the bad dialogue, the never explaining, like, why did Sean Connery show up and teach him how to be a, a fighter? He's a Highlander. The other guy's a, uh, sorry, he's a immortal. The other guy's immortal. When immortals meet, they're supposed to fight to the death, right? It, well, in the time of the gathering, well, the other guy came and cut off Sean Connery's head. He didn't have any gathering weight need. Okay, I don't know. It didn't make any sense, and they didn't explain. He never said, I'm here to train you because I train people. That's my calling or anything. I've trained people for 2,000 years. You know, there was none of that. My, uh, my Scottish accent is just slightly better than the guy who played Connor McLeod, I think. Um, the, the idea itself, though, is so cool. The idea of the immortals battling through time, or the uh, the idea of you get the power of the one that you kill? Well, see, or, that... Or, they, didn't, they didn't exploit that at all. Well, no, but what define exactly what you're talking about. The, the, the idea of somebody living in modern times who is hundreds of years old but is pretending to be a, just a normal no, guy? No, no, I mean, that kind of stuff has been done before. The idea that there are out there super beings that live forever and they live among us and here and there they will come in contact with each other, then they fight to the death. And, yeah, that was the thing that they never exploited, which I thought, geez, this would be really cool. Each time they kill another one of the other guys, they get this guy's power. They should become stronger or more agile or more, or be able to shoot lightning out of their fingers or something. I don't know what. So they never really used the whole thing with you kill one guy and you become more powerful. I mean, he got filled with electricity and all the windows and tires and stuff blew up on the cars. But it was never, like, all of a sudden now he's more powerful. Now he can run faster, or he can swing his sword faster, or, you know, he shoot lightning from his fingers or whatever. Any of that. He killed one guy, 
And then there was that, what was the bad guy's name? Conger? The Kurgan. Kurgan, okay. The Kurgan. He killed a couple of guys, but all along, the Kurgan was like the most powerful, and it never seemed to change one way or another. Uh, whether he, you know, like the Kurgan could have been somewhat powerful, but he killed uh, two in the present day and one in the distant past during the film, and we never saw him become more formidable uh, or, or anything. I don't know if they had something defined, some rules that you knew that you could follow so that you were like, okay, you kill somebody, you get like a, a big boost of power, and you have this power for a certain amount of time, but it'll steadily wear away until you know, you kill another guy, but if you kill another guy before it wears away, then you'll have double power or something, I don't know, is a great idea, but I think, yeah, it's just lacking and in execution and making, it seems like it would be a great idea for a comic book, or it, it, they probably have a comic book of it, don't they? I'm sure they have, I don't, I don't know if they still do. have not read it. No. They did have that TV show where they had Duncan McLeod instead of Connor McLeod. Right. Why did they change his name to Duncan McLeod? No, it was a different guy, a different Highlander. <clears throat> it was a Connor different. McLeod was in the first episode, and he sort of acts as a uh, Ramirez to Duncan. Duncan. Are we to be then led to believe that there are lots of immortals? Or... Well, I think on the TV show there would be one every week, right? Right. Um, there was enough immortals to, for there, there to be two, a Duncan McLeod and a Connor McLeod. So, I guess in the same clan. Perhaps not in the uh, same family, per se, but like the same little freaking Highlands village or whatever. So there must be one in, you know, there must be like ten in every decent sized city. Or so, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you what do you think of what I have to say? Is it garbage? Is it hogwash? You liked it from the beginning, so Well, I really do like Highlander, but you haven't seen the sequels. You know, Highlander two is one of the worst films that's ever seen the light of day, and I don't know, maybe that puts into perspective how good Highlander One was. I But I don't know, if if you if you have had somebody tell you that something is really good for a long, long time, a lot of times you can't help but be disappointed when you see it. Right. There are lots of things that you have told me or that I have told you that pale in comparison to the telling when you actually see it. Uh-huh. I feel like my fire has gone out. The, the, how can there be a sequel to this film, by the way? Because he kills the last one at the end, right? Isn't yeah. that what happened? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a one-and-done kind of movie, even more so than The Matrix. There is a definite end to Highlander, and, uh, yeah, the sequel basically undoes the first movie and says, you know, they're not immortals, they're actually aliens from another planet, and when they send another envoy from that planet, then the prize goes away, and suddenly the contest begins anew. But... It's a bad movie, sir. <laughs> and uh, I guess, you know, they did the best that they could to try and, you know, we have to bring Connery back and we've got to have the whole, you know, cutting off heads thing back, the game begin anew. And, you know, that's a problem with the Matrix sequels, but it was a much worse problem in Highlander 2. Yeah. In Highlander 3, they just said there were these three immortals that were... And it's a cave-in, and they've been trapped all these years. And so once they get out, the contest continues. But, yeah, that doesn't take away from the fact that the contest had ended. <laughs> and, and, got the prize. and he got the prize, which was to be able to grow old and have children. Uh, they, I don't believe they ever say that in the movie. But well, it's, he, it's hinted. That's what the prize, right. you get to be old, uh, a human being. He also says that he can see everybody's mind in the world and a bunch of stuff like that and he can know he knows what all the leaders of all the countries 
or thinking and he's going to go bring about world peace or something. Okay, so yes, it has even more of an end than than the Matrix. <laughs> Where he becomes Superman and he cleans up the town. The end. Yeah, and it would be cool if, you know, that... I, I think if they did make... If they ever do get around to making the uh, remake of the film, it could be well done. Well, you don't do it in one if you're going to remake it, the film. You yeah. do it as a trilogy... And you introduce a bunch of different characters yeah. who are all immortal. You build on these characters. You see them grow and develop, and, and some of them pass away along the way, building to the time of the quickening when all six that are left or whatever that we've learned to know and love will have to battle. I, but that's just me. I mean, it's 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 a challenge to come up with how do you turn that into three movies. And I mean. The, I think the you 86 have... Highlander was a very ambitious film despite its budget and it could have worked as a mini series it could have worked as a whole series of movies or yeah, series of books I think it works good as a series like a television series or a you know if you were to establish a whole bunch of Highlanders and I don't know I'd like to know like there to be a reason why Sean Connery comes and helps. I, I was asking my friend who'd seen it before, and I'm like, why is he there training him? Why isn't he cutting his head off and taking his power? Isn't that what Highlanders are supposed to do? And he's just like, well, I guess these guys are the good guys, and so they don't. I think that's do it. That. Yeah, and it's like the They're good just, guys try and help one another, and the bad guys just try to take the power for themselves. So it, it's the best thing could really come up with it's it's a, it's a really interesting idea and I'd like to see it you could I think with a trilogy you know you could have kind of a several characters that you're building up and you know there could be a big baddie a, a boss that you have to kill and that's the big finale at the end of part one is you kill this boss and then at the end of part two you know, you kill the the next big boss, and then part three is when you kill the overall big boss and big finale. It might be interesting to do something like where instead of it, you kill the, the big boss, you still have two good guys left at the end. And then what do they do? That might be a, a, an interesting thing to go with instead of... Well, yeah, I'm trying to remember. There's some line in the, I, that where I think Connor says to Ramirez, would you take my head to claim the prize? Back many hundreds of years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, ultimately it's easy because it's the, the main guy and then the Kurgan who's the worst of the worst. But it's much harder to satisfactorily have two good guys fight to the death. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how you could manage that. But anyways, yeah, that's, I guess, my take on the Highlander. No, because it was as satisfying as I'd hoped. But you just, yeah, you know, what you came out of it with was, how is this a successful series? How is, how are there three series and, and eight movies and, you know, a right. following of millions behind this project? Yeah, that's what I wondered when I saw that first film. And I think that it's still the same answer that I had, that the idea behind it was good enough, even though they didn't even execute it very well or explain it very well, it lit people's imaginations enough that uh, it carries on still today. How many times do you hear people say, there can be only one, you know, catchphrases like that still carrying on to a movie that should be forgotten as to how good it was it was in the first place. It was all Queen, I think is what it was. Because <laughs> Queen is that awesome. Well, next week we will talk about Flash Gordon. Flash! Yes. Ah! Because <laughs> Queen is that awesome. That's right. Alright, thanks for listening everybody. We'll see you later. Good night.
That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. As if anyone would want to copy this crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>